I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Alistair Still, CEO of Gold Mining. Thank you so much for joining me today in person. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. Thanks for having me on, Charlotte. Of course. And we're here We're here at the Rural Symposium in Florida. I want to start by asking you what your sense is of sentiment on the floor, particularly, I think, as it relates to gold. Well, it's interesting, certainly, to be, uh, first of all, back at a live conference. It's been a, a couple of years, uh, and it's a new venue, so there's some new faces and some new changes. But overall, I think there's some, some general excitement building. There's some intrepidation in the market as well. Um, but overall, uh, the attendance is, is probably more than I expected. There's some very interested parties, and I, what I'm sensing is that people want to do a little more homework before they invest now. It's not just knee-jerk reactions. They want to understand how a company's positioned, how it's managed, so they can actually talk to the, you know, the players themselves here, which is a great opportunity. Well, yeah, and that's exactly why people should be coming to these conferences. So continuing on with gold, this is our first time speaking. And one thing that I like to ask people, particularly these days, we know the gold price isn't performing as well as some people might want it to be. What do you think is the main factor that's holding gold back, you know, out of all the many things going on? Well, I guess I would also just preface that by saying you know, gold's not at a bad price right now. As of today, I'm recording it somewhere around 1730 an ounce. And I think back earlier in my career when we touched gold at $250 an ounce in the late 90s. So it has come a long way. It certainly has some room to move upwards. And I think overall, just the general sell-off in the market in the last few months, there's been a little bit of fear out there. There's concerns about inflation, talk of recession, all these things. You know, people are trying to navigate the waters. It can get a little complicated. And I think a lot of gold equities in particular have been caught in a, in a broad sell-off and maybe gold uh, somewhat the same way, whereas the sentiment for gold, I think, will rebound. It's traditionally been a great hedge against inflation, and people will go to that as a more of a safe harbor investment to protect themselves on some inflation, which is probably still yet to come. Yeah, I do think that historical context is so important to point out because, you know, you get to 2000 and suddenly that's like the new bar for gold. But if you look back, it's you can definitely see how far it's come. So talking a little bit more about inflation, that's definitely something that's on people's minds here. As an exploration company, how is that affecting you as a business? Well, it's a great question. And uh, certainly, I think what we've seen in the last uh, few weeks in particular, as the bigger producing companies have come up with operating results, we've shown the impact uh, on inflation on their bottom line. You know, costs have risen, and uh, some of the impact still lingering of COVID has caused some production shortfalls and it's had a pretty negative impact on the producers. Fortunately for us, it has less of an impact because we have uh, less of our costs are being put into the projects right now than a major company. We still have some exploration activity going on, particularly at one of our projects in Colombia. However, we get the benefit there of you know, the, the currency exchange. So in some cases, the currency exchange is helping putting us back on side and some of the runaway inflation that we're seeing at some of the operations is not quite as badly impacting us. I think everyone's feeling a little rise in the cost, but we're actually quite well off uh, compared to most. Well, that's quite encouraging to hear. I want to ask about other other challenges today in the, for you as a company. I know another one that we've been hearing from as we speak with companies is financing difficulties. What's, what's your perspective on challenges right now? That's a, a certainly a common theme for people. Um, the equity markets have been a little tougher to raise money in. Uh, I think we're in a much better position than most because we have a strong balance sheet. You know, we, we started building up that balance sheet in particular last year. We created a new company called Gold Royalty Corporation. We retained shares in that company, so we've built up that equity on our balance sheet. And we raised, uh, we crystallized at that point, it was $100 million when that was IPO'd. So that's a, a significant impact on our balance sheet. As of the last quarter, we, we had cash on hand of about $8 million still. So we're in pretty good financial shape. And an, as an added bonus for a company our size is we also now receive a significant dividend income from the shares we do hold in Gold Royalty Corp. And that's paying, it's, it's approaching a million dollars a year right now at current uh, yields for that dividend. So that's an added bonus coming in as cash flow as well. Well, yeah, and that's, that's certainly worth noting. So the company has, you know, quite a large portfolio of gold, gold copper projects, I believe all in the Americas. I wanted to ask about how you go about prioritizing, especially in times when I know you've said you're in a good financial position, but when it's, it's tough financial times, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. 
It's a great question. It's certainly one of my focuses coming into the company is um, I brought in a history of working for major producing companies like the Newmonts and the Kinrosses and Gold Corps. And so I had a good perspective of what it took to be an operator because I worked at operations, I worked at building mines. So I had a great insight into what was needed for the projects. And we, we did exactly that. We, we looked at our projects, we rated and we ranked them. We went through a very extensive exercise to update our technical reports. So we had strong technical information underpinning our material assets. And then we went about prioritizing those ones which we, which we thought we could add the most value to. And we, we can talk about a few of those, but I would also sort of, the, the other side of that is we looked at a few projects which were not our highest priority. And we've also started the process now of uh, unlocking value of those by bringing in partners for those projects. And we did make a recent announcement where we uh, took our Almaden project in Idaho. We've partnered with Nevgold where they can earn into the project by spending money on it. We become a major shareholder we effectively crystallized uh, value in that project and we're protected on the upside because we're a major equity holding in Evgold. So it's a great partnership, it's a great win-win situation for us so that we can let projects which are not core and you know the top of the list for us right now, but the right company in the right area, they can move it along and make it more of a priority for them. So it's a, it's a great win-win situation. Right, and okay, that actually tails into a number of questions that I have. So you've got this partnership angle going on, you're working on your own at some of the assets. Is your goal generally to bring these into production yourself or would you be looking to sell them or partner, especially because you have that background is from working at the larger companies? That's a great question, something we do get asked uh, yeah. quite a bit. And uh, I think we have to, you know, take stock of where we are and recognize that with a big portfolio with a lot of projects, we, first of all, we can't move them all, so we've prioritized them. The ones that we can move, I think it's really about daylighting value on those projects. I mean, right now, people tend to think of our portfolio of 16 million gold equivalent ounces measured indicated, another 16 million gold equivalent uh, inferred ounces, and they try to lump it all together as one package. What we're going about doing is showing the value of each of the projects. And as we daylight value, we can then look at opportunities to attract majors or intermediate mining companies because what we're seeing is there's a general scarcity of projects in their pipelines. And it's really about advancing our projects to try and attract attention of a, another company who might be in a better position to take it to a development and eventual production stage. I'm not saying that we can't do that, but you know, we also have to realize that there's companies who are better situated than us right now to become operators than we are. So it's really about daylighting the value of those projects, making them more attractive for the companies who are, are better equipped to advance them. Right, and let's talk about maybe a snapshot of the company's plans for the rest of 2022. It's, a, it's, a, it's very important to, to talk about some of the catalysts we have coming up. And you know, we, we discussed you know, one of the projects at Almaden where we, we found a new partnership to advance that. So that's in hand. They, that company will be drilling that later this year, we believe. Um, but one of the big advancements that we have this year is we have a project in Alaska we're very excited about. It's our Whistler project. It's a gold copper, a very large system. It's, uh, it's almost 10 million gold equivalent ounces. It's quite close to infrastructure. Um, we see that the state is now coming on board to develop that part of the, 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 the state. They're putting in state money on a feasibility study for a road that will go to our project. So we're getting very excited about that project. We see it hasn't been drilled in 10 years. That's one I think will be a big uh, catalyst for us coming up after the summer. As we take that Whistler project, we've created a new entity now called US Gold Mining Inc. We want to put that into a new vehicle to launch it publicly, to advance it and really rediscover that deposit, put it back on the map. We've brought in an experienced explorationist operator, Tim Smith, who can advance that. He's got lots of time working in the north with some major discoveries. Very excited about Whistler now as we move that forward through an IPO. I would also point out one of the other projects that people can expect news on coming up is from our La Mina project in Colombia. We did a preliminary economic assessment on that project earlier this year. We showed it had very strong economics at over a $300 million NAV, but we saw some exploration potential on an adjacent target, which was less than a kilometer away, which had some initial drilling from a previous operator, but hadn't ever taken it to the resource level. We've moved in a program uh, over the last few months at our target we call La Garucha. Uh, we announced a few of those holes a few weeks ago um, and highlighted by a very broad intercept, 345 meters of 0 0.74 gram per ton gold equivalent. So we see a big system there. We see a great opportunity to convert that drilling, which we'll be announcing in the next, uh, next few weeks, 
into uh, into the exercise to to evaluate a new resource to expand that resource by year end. So those are a couple of the big projects we're very excited about right now. Yeah, very very good. I want to ask because you mentioned you have a background working for major gold miners and you've made this shift. I think that's pretty interesting. So what made you decide to do that? Because you know, in my head, it seems it seems like a you're increasing the difficulty here. Well, increasing the difficulty, you could look at it that way, but also to me, it increases the opportunity and the excitement. I mean, I've always been a gold bug. I've always liked gold projects. I like working around gold. And when I learned about the opportunity at gold mining uh, from Amir Adnani, I'd known him for a few years. When the opportunity came up to work with Amir and the team, I was very excited. And really, what excited me was a large portfolio he'd assembled at very opportune moments, so picked up things for very uh, good value, but they had not advanced the projects, had not been able to surface that value and show others what the true value was. And so I looked at it like a, like a blank canvas. Here you had 11 projects and sitting there for some cases 10 years with no activity, just screaming, hey, let's unlock this value, let's go do some work, let's show the, the, the true value there. And that got me very excited and made me effectively uh, decide not to continue with, a, with one of the majors where I'd been for almost 25 years. I saw this opportunity, got very excited. I'm very, I'm very pleased with the decision I did make. Oh, that's great. I think that's everything from me, but if you had any final thoughts either on the company or gold in general that you wanted to share before we uh, head off. Well, I would, I would point out, I think, you know, as people think about their investments these days and think about what's done well in their portfolio, what hasn't done well, you know, always go back to the basics, I would say, and, and do your homework, do your due diligence, look at who's running the companies. You know, I think we have an exceptional management team. Look at the balance sheet. We're exceptional on the balance sheet. We have cash and cash equivalents through the securities we have in gold royalties. And then look at the assets themselves. We have a great diverse portfolio. It's all within the Americas. It's primarily gold, but there's also two billion pounds of copper in our resources. So a very strong resource base in the Americas led by an exceptional management team with a balance sheet. It's what you really want to be looking for as a value play to be part of as, as the prices rebound here. Well, perfect. Thank you so much for coming to share about the company and what's going on in the gold sector. Pleasure to have been here. Thanks for having me. Great. And once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Alistair Still with Gold Mining.